The Image Makers, the designer-photographer partnerships that change the world. The way in which a fashion label presents itself to the world can be just as important as the garments it makes. Before a customer gets anywhere near the clothes, chances are they'll have some impression of the brand's broader image. That means a designer's work must be backed up with a strong and distinctive advertising campaign to generate a dedicated audience. However, creating a unique and original image which projects wide appeal and an underlying aura of exclusivity is far from an easy task. And this is when the world's top tier fashion photographers rise above the rest. By capturing the spirit of a brand along with a designer's vision, they present the clothing in a way that's both inspiring, enticing and recognisable over a prolonged period of time. Let's look at some of fashion's most successful collaborations between design houses and world's high-end photographers, exploring how the magic touch of the top-tier fashion photographers can turn a little-known atelier into an instantly recognizable icon. Examining the influential brands and the photographers that became synonymous with them. The following is a breakdown of how creative execution can develop into a world famous signature brand image over time. Hello, I'm Paul Roberts. I'm the founder of Fashion Industry Broadcast. And today we're doing another um, episode on our highly popular The Image Makers series. But before we, we start, um, what I'd like to do is ask you a small favour. We have a lot of people watch our films. Um, we've, our subscriber list is almost up to towards 100,000. And we'd love you to subscribe, even if you like one of our films. Hit the bell, leave a like, leave a comment. We love to hear from you. Tell us what you'd like to see us do in our next film and we'll do our best to see if we can accommodate you. Now today, today's episode of The Image Makers is a partnership that I personally have been a huge fan of. Um, the photographer in question is Glenn Luchford, whose style is incredible. He's probably not one of the, the big name or the super big name uh, photographers like, you know, Testino or Stephen Mizell, but his work is incredible. And the partnership today we're talking about is the, the work he's done with the Gucci brand and under the direction of uh, principally the ex-creative <coughs> director, Alessandro Michele. Now, you may love Alessandro Michele's work or you may loathe it. It's deep and it's beautiful. It's like happy goth. It's romantic goth versus goth based on death and drugs. It also exemplifies the perfection of Italian craftsmanship that doesn't exist anymore anywhere else, that everything's made impeccably. I adore Alessandro. It's incredibly beautiful, well-made, but there's also a light-heartedness as well, which I really think is fresh and wonderful. And he's just such a wonderful man. He is a very special person. It's very vintage inspired and you can see where he, he kind of draws his inspiration from and it's very kind of historical in a way. I thought it was so incredibly beautiful and inspiring and he's even beyond as talented as he was before and people are accepting his work and I think he's extraordinary. I think it's the first time I go to a fashion show that I don't even look at the clothes to see what I could wear because I feel like I'm in an installation of art and I thought it was very emotional and mind-blowing. It's ironic because now, with the new creative director who was just recently installed, showing at Milan Fashion Week, you see, you see a return to the 90s glamour that Tom Ford put into Gucci. Gone is the maximalism of Alessandro Michele. Um, and it's an era that I personally lean into and, and love. I, I was wearing Gucci back in those days when Tom Ford was there, and, and I've been a big fan of Tom Ford ever since. Now, the collaboration between photographer Glenn Luchard and, as I said, recently departed creative director Alessandro Michele um, has been an instrumental force in reshaping the brand's visual identity under Michele. And together they've created some really captivating campaigns that garnered both critical acclaim and helped transform Gucci once again into a global fashion powerhouse. 
And in this episode of the, the Image Makers, we want to explore that particular partnership, highlighting their shared vision, distinctive aesthetic, um, and what the impact they've had on the fashion industry. I've just noticed in the last couple of seasons that the designers are coming with a completely different attitude, like Gucci, for example, like Alessandro just took over. And it was so exciting being on set with him because he's completely free, you know what I mean? He's not thinking in a similar way to his predecessors and what's coming next. They sent me a couple of reference pictures and I thought, prior to the job, and I thought, oh, that's really great, but I bet when we get to the set we won't actually be allowed to do that. But then when we got to the set, we actually could do that. And he was really encouraging just to keep going and keep going, which was so exciting, you know. Now, Glenn Luchford and Alison McKelly have built a, you know, an amazing creative partnership through their time at Gucci. And it, it's a shared vision of, I guess, melding nostalgia, eclecticism, and also romanticism. And both artists had a deep appreciation for vintage aesthetics um, and retro things that, that were maybe huge in the past. And Alessandro Michele, you know, based himself in Rome because he wanted to be surrounded by history. He didn't want to be in Milan. So he's a really interesting character. He's almost like an art historian in a way. Um, and this inspiration, drawing from various eras, resulted in campaigns that seamlessly blend the past and the present. And their work um, often featured opulent settings, vibrant colours, and an abundance of intricate details, pretty much like the collections that Alexandra McKelly was creating, um, creating a, a whimsical and dreamlike atmosphere, which was far removed from the, the minimal, smouldering, sexy aesthetic that Tom Ford brought to Gucci in the 90s. The event of the season in Milan was Alessandra McKaylee's debut at Gucci, and I think the show was everything people needed it to be and wanted it to be. It is very different from uh, what it used to be. It's very brave than a big Maison like Gucci uh, leave a space to the young generation because it's very now, everything is about new generation. Between J.W. Anderson, uh, uh, Alessandro Michele, Alexander Wong, I feel a little bit old-fashioned. <laughs> I think it was the most surprising show of the season. It was a real break with what Frida was doing, certainly with what we think of as the, as the Gucci heritage. The thing that's interesting about him taking this sort of estate sale approach is that it's such a huge brand and I think that's something more natural for a young brand to do. This is a company with stores all over the world and how does that eccentric message sort of translate on the retail floor I think will be his challenge. It felt so young and spirited and I think that felt incredibly fresh for the Gucci brand and yet you know there was still some wonderful sort of heritage pieces sort of kept in there so you felt like the trademark of Gucci was there but the spirit of the girl was much younger and much more modern you know I love the ambiguity of like is she a boy is she a girl whose clothes is she wearing it felt like it was a real new start. Everything looks completely different so decadent. Every celebration of fragile youth is in some way nostalgic or melancholic because it's a time of your life that you cannot repeat. They're constantly looking at a past that they're idealizing in a way, romanticizing. The time is very tough. If you read a newspaper, if you watch the TV, uh, you're scaring about the news. The new generation is need love, Romantic is is escape. Maybe that's why they are so nostalgic. It's a tough time. I definitely don't see it sort of without optimism. You know, maybe it's a return to the emotion of fashion. You know, and you know, maybe it's time that we were made to feel something when we saw clothes and not just take it on face value. Now, when Alessandro Michele took over the reins as Gucci's creative director back in 2015. He sought to revolutionise the brand's aesthetic and break away from the previous um, heritage set by Tom. And Glenn Luchford played a critical role in translating McKaylee's vision into striking visual narratives. And together they discarded, I guess, pretty much all the rules of traditional um, fashion photography and embraced a more cinematic approach, infusing storytelling um, elements into their campaigns. And it was a really remarkable period of image making for the, you know, all powerful Gucci brand. Working on the set with Alessandro is always fun. It's fun to work with your friends 
Um, there's a level of comfort and experimentation and Alessandro really sets up an environment where people feel free to take a chance. You know, I, I think from the very first time uh, we met, it was uh, love at first sight. Uh, and it's been a pleasure working with him. He's an absolute genius. I love the work that we do together. It's always fun to work with Alessandro, and this set in particular has been great. It's quirky. It's a world that I think Alessandro has created from different parts of his life, from his imagination. And like everything he does, dreamed up something unexpected and really surprising. Whether it's making clothes or shoes or furniture or the appetizing, all of it feels like it comes from a place of creativity, of art. It's really, it's a nice thing to be a part of. Now, the debut campaign that these two worked on was a turning point for Gucci. The campaign captured the spirit of Alessandro's vision with its whimsical and vintage-inspired aesthetic, and it featured a diverse cast of models showcasing Gucci's new direction and celebrating, above all, individuality. Luchard and McKayley's campaigns often exhibited elements of surrealism as well as romanticism, and they transported you know, the, the viewer um, into dreamlike narratives that went into fantastical worlds. And these campaigns blended fashion with art, often evoking emotions and challenging conventional beauty standards, pretty much everything that Michele seemed to be um, leaning into. Now, cultural references and social commentary, you can't um, view the work of these two without observing these sort of connections. And the creative duo frequently incorporated cultural references and social commentary into their work. It was quite cerebral, as well as you know, gorgeous and beautiful. You know, from everything from celebrating diversity, to inclusivity, to addressing political and environmental issues, their campaigns went beyond just selling products. They captured the zeitgeist and engaged with audiences on a deeper, I guess, thinking level. So what are we talking about? Well, let's look at the Gucci campaign for spring-summer 2016. Now, Lucha had worked with Alessandro on this debut campaign uh, when he was creative director, and the campaign featured a, a whimsical and eclectic aesthetic capturing Michele's vision of romantic and vintage-inspired Gucci. The campaign featured a diverse cast of you know, incredible models, including Tessa, Charlotte Bruinisma, Leah Pavlova, Aneta Pajek, as well as others. And then there was the pre-fall campaign of 2016. And again, the collaboration, they worked on a campaign that was romantic and had eclectic themes of the previous collections with a focus on showcasing the intricate details and craftsmanship of Gucci's designs. So it wasn't all about kind of whimsical art and everything. Sometimes it was more product specific. And I think that's, that's a, a really clever tactic when you are creating images. You want to keep people um, wondering what's going to come next to keep people engaged and going on their journey with you, which it very much was. So that campaign um, featured the models such as Paulina, Ogan Acheva, Peyton Knight, and others. And then there was the Gucci for Winter campaign of 2016. And in this, the Alessandro's eccentric and vintage-inspired aesthetic, and it featured opulent settings and a mix of vibrant patterns and textures. And the models this time were Petra Collins, Sophia Friesen, Leah Pavlova, and others.
Then the, the spring-summer 2017 campaign conveyed a sense of surrealism and dreamlike narratives featuring models surrounded by animals. Yes, it was weird. I've never seen animals in, like animals used this way in a, a fashion campaign. Sembra un angelo caduto dal cielo Tra fanatici in pelle che la scrutano senza poesi Sto perdendo, sto perdendo, sto perdendo, sto perdendo tempo And it was very, almost shocking. I mean, when I saw it, I thought, what the hell is this? But I guess part of the challenge these days in, in, in the attention economy is actually creating disturbing things and disrupting conventions so people um, are forced to sit and think. Not everyone will like it, not everyone will hate it, but it will get people to, to watch it. So the models are surrounded by animals in lush and vibrant landscapes. And the models and the animals <laughs> included Lorenz Miklasevics, Unia Paklavlahova, Ellen de Weir and others. Obviously there's a lot of hard to pronounce Russian models that were favoured by Lutzford. And then I guess one of my favourites, one of my favourite fashion campaigns, one of my favourite camp creative campaigns of all time of any um, genre, be it advertising or even movie making, was the, the incredible pre-fall 2017 campaign which was titled Soul Scene. Now you probably have seen it, um, and it's a recreation that Lutchford did of a dream-like you know, scenario going back, say, 50 years to when the dance halls of Northern England were in full swing, you know, Northern Seoul. But this time, to put a little twist on it, all the models were models of colour, but wearing the, the most up-to-date you know, bejeweled and, you know, maximalist designs that, that Michele had cooked up. All done to the sound of a classic soul song by Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons, The Night. And it's mesmerising. I don't think I could play the full film here because you know, we'll get a copyright strike from YouTube. But we'll put some of the images in. Now, a little bit of background about this campaign. You want to know how they cooked this up. It was inspired by the photographs of an, an artist, Malik Sidbi, who in the 60s and 70s captured youth culture in Africa. And the pre-fall 2017 campaign reflected this vibrant at attitude of the collection. And again, as I said, it was referencing England's underground Northern Soul movement from the 60s and 70s, which in itself is an incredible phenomenon. If you've seen the way that the Northern Soul dancers are all dancing swing and um, with the costumes that they wear with a nod to, you know, retro flares and all the like. It's really special. And the campaign explored the freedom, freedom of expression that was found in music and dance. It was set in a, a really great, authentic dance hall, um, the Midway, Mid May Club in London. And it's a colourful dance hall. And photographer Luchford, together with artistic direction by Christopher Simmons, captured Alessandra Michele's latest collections in a dynamic and spontaneous video that will go down in history as one of the, the most special and amazing. Now, in the world of fashion campaigns, a vital role in capturing the essence of a brand's identity and capturing the audience's attention, I don't think any campaign before it um, did it in the way and make the waves that it did that Luchford's pre-fall soul scene captured. It really defined the way that artists could, could use conventional fashion narratives. Now, I guess to create the pre-fall campaign, it was beautifully shot, and they captured the spirit of this subculture so well. You know, and you'll see the, you know, the, the artists, uh, who are artists as well as models, performing, not just modelling the clothes, because they're dancing. You have um, Alpha Dia, who's playing the DJ. You have Alton Mason, 
who was an incredible dancer in his own right, you know, doing somersaults and high kicks and as were all the other models in the scene. It seemed that they all went through dance rehearsals <laughs> before they arrived on the set. It was more like a movie, like a Baz Luhrmann kind of spectacular, all singing, all dancing, all performing uh, piece of theatre. And as I said, the campaign featured a, a diverse cast of models, or most of the models were of colour, and also showcased a range of Gucci's very eclectic and retro-inspired designs. The images of Luchford captured a sense of nostalgia while infusing it with a contemporary twist. And the bold use of colours, intricate patterns and flamboyant styling create a visual feast um, which transported the viewer to a bygone era in a different part of the world, in a different part of time. Now, Soul Scene made a significant impact on the culture because it challenged traditional fashion norms. And the campaign defined the world's, I guess, beauty standards and the representation of models and dancers from different ethnic backgrounds, body types, ages, sent a powerful message of acceptance and empowerment. And moreover, the, the campaign, I guess it embraced the spirit of these subcultures and their influence on fashion. And the Northern Soul movement, with its emphasis on music, dance, and individual expression, served as a powerful metaphor for Gucci's own creative journey. And by aligning itself with this um, subculture, the brand demonstrated its commitment to authenticity, creative expression, and I guess diversity. And if you haven't seen it, Google it. Um, Soul Scene, Glenn Luchford, um, pre-fall 2017. And it shows you know, how clothing be can become a vehicle for personal identity and self-expression, just as dance can. What can you say about Luchford's image making? I mean, it was, it was impeccable. It was brilliantly shot, captured from different angles. <clears throat> you got the whole dancing. You felt as though you were, you were, dan you were one of the dancers in the hall. Um, you know, dy dynamic poses and dynamic dance moves, it moved away from the static poses and aesthetic commonly associated with fashion photography. And this departure from the norm not only made the campaign I guess visually captivating, but also reinforced the idea that fashion can be a living art form that thrives on movement and individuality. And it, it's, I guess the whole soul scene, I can't say enough about it because I love it. Soul scene stands as a testament to the power of creativity and storytelling and obviously inclusivity in fashion. Then there was the Gucci Fall Winter 2017 campaign where Luchford portrayed a retro-inspired aesthetic with a mix of bold colours, patterns and eclectic settings, reflecting again Alessandro's ongoing uh, vision for Gucci. And the models in that campaign included Ellen DeVere, Giselle Fox, Nica, Nica Cole and others. So I guess when you look at the, the legacy and impact of this collaboration, it's definitely let a, left a mark on the world of fashion. And their campaigns have received widespread recognition, winning awards and influencing other brands and photographers. And in the process, they kind of redefined Gucci's visual identity, making it one of the most desirable brands and influential luxury brands of the 21st century. So it really, it worked and it paid off and they got the results in sales. Strano e bello. Più strano sei e più bello sei. So the partnership, to sum up, has been like a, a match made in heaven. It was a transformative force in the fashion industry. And their shared vision, distinct aesthetics and commitment to storytelling resulted in some of the most captivating campaigns that were able to transcend the boundaries of traditional fashion photography. And in the process, they redefined Gucci's visual identity, and they also infused it with a series of values, which were, um, you know, diversity, creativity, self-expression, empowerment, and it 
thrilled audiences worldwide. Il difetto ti rende un po' più speciale. And their collaboration, I guess, serves as a testament to the power of this incredible you know, alchemy, which is this artistic synergy and the potential for visionary partnerships to, to shape the future of fashion. I love to be open to the things that are, make me feel like, oh my gosh, what is this? And I start to play with these kind of things. I like the ugly things. We are selling the dream of freedom. It's like a voice that is saying, uh, if you are like this, you are good, nothing wrong.